everybody welcome back and um, it is Tuesday morning um, it's been a week since I filmed my last video so I'm really trying hard to do this weekly um, so let's just get started my little guy is sleep I don't know how long I have and I'm battling with some bright Sun coming in but that's okay we'll be fine um so what I worked on I and I've got this is my happy planner I mentioned it in the last video um, and I keep track here what I want to talk about on YouTube and up here is all my stitching plans so for the week so I have this to refer to um, someday I might do a plan with me video or like a walkthrough of my week of stitchy plans we'll see if there's any interest in that let me know um, I'm not really set up to do that kind of video uh, but that's okay, I can figure it out. So, since my last video, I'll show you what I worked on. I worked on three different projects. This one I showed last time, and I think I got just a little bit more done on it, but I'm going to show you anyway. So this is Rebecca Nurse by Primitive Hair. There we go. And again, I'm stitching this on a piece of denim colored uh, even weave, and I don't know what it's called. And it's 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 a weird fabric, so it's kind of hard to stitch on. But there we go. This this project has worked really well for a lot of prompts in Magical Stitches. Um, surprisingly, cause there's not a lot of features in the project, so I've got a lot done. I'm also using this for um, Cheryl's Daily Thirty. Uh, scavenger hunt uh, prompts and that group unfortunately is closed to new members uh, but if uh, they have opened it up again we'll let you know and you can try and get in it it's a really fun group so the next project I've been working on is my French farmhouse from Chatelaine if you're interested I did an unboxing video of this kit a few years ago and you can go back in my list of videos and check it out I put this away for a long time. I found I find it really hard to work on with the kids around. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of really nice silks and beads and um, my pattern is on my computer and my iPad. So I'm working from a device and it just ends up being a lot of things around. I have my either my laptop or my iPad on my lap. I've got my big piece of fabric. I've got my threads. It's just too much to do with the little one's grabby hands so and you know little kids their fingers are always sticky I don't want that around my project but this week I pulled it out and surprisingly my little four-year-old was really interested in what I was doing um, his little brother was asleep so I did try and work a little bit on this and see how it went he was so interested in what I was doing he really wanted to help so I let him pull the thread through for me and he was thrilled and he he said while we were working on it he said mommy look what we're making together and that just that just warmed my heart so I took some pictures and I will definitely cherish them and yeah this project just just ha all of a sudden has a lot more meaning to me now it had a lot before now it has even more cuz my little guy and I worked on it together So here we are. So this is a mandala. So it is a big project all around. This is just the center block. And it's, um, I'll insert a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. And this is the roof line of the farmhouse. And there's grass and flowers down here, pretty blue sky. There we go. And I got the kit for this from European Cross Stitch. So I'm using all of the called for threads. And that Gloriana uh, Flormel, so nice. So nice to work with. And that's what my little guy was pulling through the fabric with his with my needle and I was I was a little I was a little antsy about it. You'd think it would be because of the sharp needle, but no, it was because of that Gloriana silk. Anyway, it all went fine, and he, it, he lasted helping me for probably about 15 to 20 minutes, and then said that he was tired of it. 
<laughs> so fair enough. I'm surprised he lasted that long. And finally, I've been working on my All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna. My husband bought me this kit it up a few years ago for Christmas and you know, you just start all the things, so it kind of goes by the wayside, but here we are. I'm really working, I'm really focusing and working on finish this, finishing, <laughs> finishing this big green hill here. Um, it goes on forever. I just have a few little, um, little creatures to put in right here, and then it's just the rest of the green to fill this in, and that hill will be done. I'm going to try my best to fit as many prompts this week um, into this project as I can. I have this down as one of my focus projects for the year and if I actually got this finished this year I would call the whole stitchy year a success. Um, yeah, so maybe this will be my number one focus. This and Rebecca Nurse. I really want to get Rebecca Nurse finished too. So yeah, loving this and I'll put a picture of what this will look like finished. And that's it for my whips. This is going to go maybe pretty fast. You know how long it is already. I used to really like making a long video. And I still do. I still love the idea of a long video. I love to watch a long video. But where I have no idea how long Henry's going to sleep. And he's just learning. And he's struggling. He's just learning to sleep on his own. So my plans for this coming week, um, let me, let me talk about this weekly homework for Magical Stitches and I'll tell you how I'm going to fit everything in. I've already completed, um, two, no, I've already completed one prompt from this week and I'm working on another one. So the first prompt from the homework is stitch on something with beads in it. I'm not going to go through and read why. You, if you're in the group, you can read that if you're not in the group. You're probably not that interested, but um, stitch on something with beads. It's a hundred stitches, so it's not very many. I'm going to take out my my chatelaine again when I have a chance and put another hundred into that center block. I don't need to actually do the beading. I just need to um, stitch on something with beads. Um, the next one is a hundred stitches on a food you would not eat. I struggled with this one um, because I'm a bit of a foodie, not not so much that I am into all the really fancy foods, but I'll eat a lot of different foods. Anything that's relatively normal, I will probably eat it, with the exception of um, some shellfish, and it's because it's a texture thing. So like mussels, um, oysters. Anything that has that snot-like consistency, sorry to be gross, but I can't, I just can't do it. Um, so a food you would not eat. But then we did, a group of us did a homework video for Magical Stitches. And you can find that on the Virtual Stitchers YouTube channel, um, where we all talked about what we would work on for each prompt. It's pretty helpful if anyone is doing these challenge groups and you're struggling to um, find projects to fit to fit the prompts. Anyway, we talked about it and I decided that since this project, All Creatures, has lots of different animals and specifically ones with antlers or horns, I'm going to use this because one of the things I prefer not to eat is wild game. Um, for no other reason than I just don't really like the taste. It's a little too gamey for me, too strong. And, um, yeah, there's just, I know, I know it's probably healthier and in a lot of ways more ethical. It's just something about the wild meat. It just doesn't appeal to me. So I'm going to use this project. My other option was to pull out my Pasta Time by Soda Stitch because there is a pasta dish in that with, um, I believe it's clams in the image. And like I said before, I wouldn't, I won't eat those unless they're deep fried. Um, but I really want to get some work done on this. So I'm going to fit this one in. 
The next prompt is to stitch 100 stitches on either with either blue or red thread. Now, if you're using blue or red, it has to have the word in the name with a few exceptions for red. I think there's things like raspberry, cranberry, garnet. There's a few options listed for that. Now, what I'm going to do is there are some spots of blue in this. This house is actually a blue. It's a very, very light blue. And there's a section with some water. I need to go through and double check that that thread color, that DMC thread color, actually has blue in the name. And if it does, I'm going to use this. Um, if it does not, I'm going to have to look at something else. I just thought of maybe, maybe Rebecca Nurse because she has that red house, but I think the thread color is terracotta, so it doesn't have red in the name. Um, so that one's still a bit up in the air. It's only 100 stitches. I know I have probably 20 projects on the go that will fit. Um, but I really, like I said, I really want to try to make everything fit this. Oh, the other thing is, this project's all an anchor. Anchor thread. I'm not that familiar with the anchor thread specifics. I don't know if they have color names. So I've got a little, I've got a little research to do. Um... Okay, the next one is stitch on a project with a flower, 200 stitches. I've completed this one already. I've done, I used the flower, there's flowers here. Yeah, here and here. So I did 200 in the grass. And then the last one is nightmare. Now I, I was going to use my chopping mall because it's horror movie related and that's just full of nightmares for me. But I think what I might do to rationalize is say that one real nightmare I actually have had was being at the zoo and all the animals got out. So um, I, might, I might see if I can use all creatures great and small because it looks like all these animals might have escaped from somewhere and they're all over the lawn. And I think that'll work. This guy kind of looks like a little tiger. Um, and that's 200 stitches. There's a bonus, and the bonus is 111 stitches on the dot, no more, no less, um, for each of three prompts. And what we have to do is use the first letter of three names and stitch on a project that has something in it that starts with those letters. Pretty easy. This project's really full of things. So the first one is L. I'm going to go with, um, this kind of looks like a llama to me. So I'm going to stitch 111 stitches in here. There's R. This is a rabbit. So I'm going to do that. And then M. There's, there's a man. So there we go. So it's a total of 333 stitches. So that's this week's uh, Magical Stitches homework. If this had beads, I'd be able to do everything in the one project. But it doesn't. Um, my other plans this week, so on Wednesday, so tomorrow, um, I am starting a stitch along with Ellen and I'm really excited and everybody else should join in too. We both bought the, I'm, look, I'm looking around to see where it is, but it's right here next to me. We bought the um, Hands Across the Seas charity chart for um, relief efforts for Australia. It's called Jane Marshall, 1857. Here's what, the, this is just in black and white, the picture, the project isn't, but it's PDF, and I printed it off. Um, I'll insert a picture of what it looks like in color here. So I've got to kit this up today and get ready to start it for tomorrow. Um, I'm super pumped. I wasn't going to start anything this month. Um, I was going to try and just work on projects that I have on the go and make some serious progress. But then I watched Ellen's video. She showed off that she got the chart too and I don't need much of an excuse to start something. Let's be serious. That was enough. Um, so we're going to start this Wednesday. You, too, you should too. I don't know if we've decided on a hashtag yet. We threw around some funny ones and we'll probably go with something cute. So keep your eye on um, Ellen's Instagram, my Instagram, um, that'll be on a card at the end of the video. And yeah, come follow us and stitch with us. It's going to be fun. 
Um, it's Jane Marshall, 1857. You can buy this still from Hands Across the Sea on their website. I think it's like 10 pounds maybe, so not it's not very much at all it's it's maybe 15 bucks Canadian I think it's like 13 American something like that I didn't look up all the conversions um, and it's really sweet and it should be pretty quick so I haven't yet decided fully on fabric I'm considering this orange this is showing up a little brighter than it actually is let me see it's some light it's not quite that bright anyway this is um, a 32 count Jobelin from Ships Manor and it was the September the I don't know if that's focusing the September primitive fabric of the month um, I bought this from his website yeah yeah it's definitely not that bright it's more of a peach it's more of a peach color that's crazy I don't know why it does that Wow okay anyway Hopefully it photographs more accurate than that. So I'm going to try and kit this up today. Um, maybe I can film a kit up with me video. I don't, I'll have to watch some and see the best way to do it. I'm getting ahead of myself because I don't always have that much time. And this is... Uh... This is uh, Auversois it's charted for but there is the DMC I might try and go with some over dyed threads that I have I might have some fun with it okay I've got to measure this and make sure it fits I'm, I think I'm gonna do it on this Joblin I do like to do my more historic looking samplers on linen um, but I really I just really like the color of this fabric so I think I'm gonna use it especially since it's a fun piece okay the other project I'm dying to start and I did want to start it in January and I pushed it and pushed it um, is I should take this out of the package um, while I'm taking this out let me mention this is I'm gonna show you a Lindy stitches uh, a Lindy stitches chart um, you should go to Facebook and join the Lindy Stitchers Facebook group. Um, I'm helping Stephanie out with that group a little bit. And we're having lots of fun posting pictures of our stitchy friends and birds and talking about books and showing off our gorgeous Lindy Stitches projects. Also, she is going to post her Nashville releases there first. So if you want to see it first, join the Lindy Stitchers Facebook group. On Facebook I want to start stars bright I almost call it birds to the bow because I've been looking at so many pictures of that stars bright um, this reminds me of my husband and I and I really want to stitch this and put it up in our bedroom I think it's really cute and it would be something really sweet to go to sleep and wake up to every day um, why I'm specifically mentioning it now rather than when I start it I might start it this weekend if I go through here's what I'll do if I get through all my magical stitches homework which I don't always I will start it this weekend it'll be like like a prize for reaching my goal I don't need much okay so I picked three fabrics that I'm going back and forth on the first is by Hand Dyed Fibers, and it's a 36 count linen, and of course my colors aren't going to look great. You know what I need? I need something white. There we go. Something white to hold against it. No, oh, that's, that's not too bad. So it's a very light, a very light uh, lilac color. Hmm. Last video I had bad lighting because it was late in the evening this video I've got too much bright light coming in because it's morning it's only like it's only 9 30 in the morning so anyway I've got this there we go this like lilac color I think this is the safe choice I still have to measure and make sure it fits so I, I'm not 100% yet I also have a 40 count silk weaver um, in gold spinner this is pretty accurate it's slightly lighter than this there you go 
And then I have this, um, this option. It's from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. Um, any Canadians watching, if you don't know about Rolanda's shop, what's wrong with you? Go to Etsy, check out Hand Dyed by Rolanda. Um, her fabrics are very affordable and gorgeous. She's now got um, threads and she's selling patterns too. Okay, there we go. It's this this blue gray. It looks, you know what? It looks stormy. It reminds me of a very stormy sky. And that's that's pretty accurate. It's a little bluer. Um, let me hold it up with the pattern. The reason why I thought this might work is I thought it would look good with the browns from the. Uh, how do I do this? There you go. The browns and the reds from the birds. I thought it would look good. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with the safe choice and go with the light lilac. It's really going to come down to measurements. Anyway, I'm really excited to do this. Um, Stephanie designed this with a granny square afghan in mind because you can see she has these granny squares all around the edges and she had the cool idea that just like traditionally making a granny square blanket, you're kind of using the the scraps of your yarn and same idea with this if you have like some ends of threads or thread someone maybe gifted you that you didn't know what to do with um, or you just bought some really cool variegated threads because they're gorgeous and you have no idea what to do with them this is kind of perfect do them put them in the border make it unique so, I'm excited to start this and share it in the group so if you join the group and you don't see that I posted a start You'll know either I didn't finish my homework or maybe I started something else. Okay, I had to take a minute and go grab Henry. He woke up from his nap. He's sitting right here in his jumper, so you might hear him. I gave him a snack. Hopefully I can get through the rest of this. Um, I wanted to talk about my cross-stitch journal. And I started to, my camera stopped. But here it is. This was a gift from the lovely Adele for Christmas. And I'm just going to briefly show you a few things. Okay, here's what the beginning looks like. And it's designed, you can list all of your projects, kind of like a table of contents. And there's two pages for that. Total of 50 projects. This was made for me. So, um, just to show you, this is what each page looks like. So you can write the pattern name, the designer, start date, end date, um, some information, so what you stitched it on, the count, the size. There's a long section for the floss use, a time tracker if you're interested to put in the number of hours you stitched on it. I'll use that for some that block for something else. Um, maybe for hashtags I'm using, stitch alongs, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's a notes section that I've decided to use for floss substitution. So this is really handy for me. I run into the problem where I make quick floss substitutions, stuff them in a project bag, and then put it away for six months. And I don't remember necessarily what they're for. So I filled this out up to project nine. I need to keep working on it. And here's an example under my notes for this one. This one is Cape Cod Keeps by Plum Street. I just put one over one. I'm stitching this project one over one. And that might be, that'll be obvious when I look at the project, but it might be helpful if I wanna flip through this book and decide what to work on. Maybe I don't, excuse me, maybe I don't feel like working on one over one, which is often the case. So this is a pretty cool little journal and I use this along with my planner. Um, it works out well. I can flip through and make some decisions on, um, on challenge group prompts or you know whatever I have no idea where Adele got oh look it's it's looks like it's produced by Fat Quarter Shop that's fun um, and it was $14.95 so the only other thing I really wanted to talk about was um, something I'm really into right now so I've been um, attempting to do some spring cleaning winter in Nova Scotia is a little bit bleak um, it's cold it's often dark not today it's beautiful today but winter is bleak and I can't wait for spring I don't enjoy I don't enjoy winter I wish I did I don't like to be cold I don't like the dreariness 
So I started spring cleaning. Um, my little guy, my four-year-old, is helping. He loves to use the steam mop. I put a little bit of peppermint essential oil in the water reservoir, and it makes the house smell beautiful. Oh. You dropped your cookie. Okay. There you go. Okay. So as part of that, I went to one of my favorite Etsy shops and bought some wax melts. I like to burn wax melts more so than candles. Candles I'm bad for forgetting about, and just the other night I did have a candle on, and in the morning my husband let me know, um, you know, I came down in the morning and that candle was still burning, and that freaks me out. So I try not to use them too often. But I bought some wax melts, and I want to show you some of my favorites. So um, these are from a store called... Uh, Frost Beard Studio. They're on Etsy. They are wonderful, very affordable. The shipping is great. Um, this one I bought a while ago. Oh, they're the candles and melts they have are fandom based. Um, they're a little bit nerdy. They're a lot nerdy. So they're 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 really fun. They don't necessarily smell like what the name is, but that's okay. I will admit I buy them because of the name. So. There's this one. This one is called Old Books. And it's a nice fresh smell. I don't... It's not as musty as Old Books actually smell. But I can kind of see it. This is the one I have going right now. And it's my current favorite. It's called Sherlock Study. I'm a very big Sherlock Holmes fan. And this has the scents of cherry wood, tobacco, and rain. It's it's pretty strong. I will say that about these scents. They're very, um, I'm trying to think of the word, a potent. They're very potent. Uh, so I don't necessarily burn it for too long. I don't plug it in all day. I just like it for a little bit to get the scent in the air. And then I bought Rainy Day Reads. Now you can tell the day I actually went and bought these, it was rainy. I was really into books that day. And so I picked this one up. This was part of my, <laughs> I'm tired of the dreariness. I'm ready for spring purchasing spree. So this one smells like fresh rain, ginger, and lavender. And those are all scents I really love. I really love lavender a lot. I find it really relaxing and calming. Ginger is um, a little bit invigorating. Like it puts me, it gives me a bit of an energetic feeling. And finally, I bought this one um, as kind of a, <sighs> I don't need to do this, but I bought this one because my husband's a big Lord of the Rings fan, and I thought, if I snuck this one in there, maybe he wouldn't roll his eyes so much. He doesn't care, but, you know, maybe he wouldn't roll his eyes so much over my purchase. It didn't work. But it's called Halfling Hills, and it has the scents of clover, moss, and pipe tobacco. So, yeah, it's a very, it's a very fresh green scent. And when I say green, I guess I mean it's like grassy, it's clover moss. And it's, it, I, I can, I can see that. Yeah, it's a very clean smell. It smells like you just got out of the shower. So those are some of my favorite things right now. Um, I'm probably going to have Sherlock study burning for the rest of the month. Um, I don't like to clean out my... I don't like to clean the, the oil, the wax, out of the burner, so I leave it in as long as I can stand it. So I guess that's it for this week. Um, thanks for coming back and joining me. I so appreciate the comments on my last video welcoming me back. Um, it made me all warm and fuzzy inside to know that you missed my videos, and I appreciate it. Oh, and that's my cue to go, so see you next time. Bye.